talking about how God uses the unqualified or We love you, we praise you, we adore you, Holy Spirit, move in this place. Manifest your glory with great power and authority. Open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears that we may hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. Speak, Lord. Speak with great power. Speak with great authority. Manifest your power. Save today. Heal delay today. Deliver today. Set free today, Lord. Let your revelation knowledge flow in this place. Let us hear something that would cause us to be conformed to the image of your son, Jesus. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you would, turn with me to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. Last week, I, I thought... I would be done with our series, Shepherd versus a Hireling. And so I realized I, I wanted to go back and deal with one more thing because we touched on a lot on last week. And so I wanted to make sure that you know how to deal with any conflict or issues of unforgiveness and offense that try to come to you. So I want to be able to teach you that today. So I want to do a little review, just a slight review, and then I want to get into laying the foundation of what we're talking about today. So we, we talked about last week the wolves. We talked about how people become wolves. We talked about one way is through selfish ambition. And we looked at Korah, and we looked at... Uh, Abiram and Dathan, how they became wolves in the ministry or the house of God and how they approached Moses telling him that he take too much on himself when really that was their own motivation because they tried to operate in an office that God did not ordain for them and we know the story, they died, the earth opened them up and they went alive into hell then we looked at the second way people become wolves is they become wolves because of unforgiveness and bitterness. And we looked at Absalom and we looked at Ahithophel. Ahithophel held in his heart for 10 years a bitterness against David. And I explained to you who Ahithophel was. Ahithophel was the counsel of David. He was his confidant. He was his good friend. And all of a sudden, they, they split apart, and he was away for David for 10 years and held this bitterness of, of something that David did to him. And I showed you who was related to him. Bathsheba was his granddaughter. And so he held it in his heart, not knowing God had already judged David. He tried to get revenge himself. And that's how we get bitter. That's really what bitterness is. You trying to pay someone else back for what they've done to you. And so he became wolfish because of that very thing. And so I want to make sure that if you struggle with that, that you can get free. And how you get free. And so we're going to deal with that today. Because God wants us whole, he wants us healthy in his body. A lot of people, the, Paul said it to the Galatian church. He said, you ran well, but what hindered you? So I don't want you to start out running well, and then you get hindered in your race with God, in your walk with him. When you go and study the great men of God of history, 
you got to look at some of them started out with spectacular ministries. I encourage you to get a book if you call to ministry called God's Generals. Why they succeeded, why they failed. Many people start out doing a great work with God, but they don't finish. Look at great men like A.A. A. Allen, who died as an alcoholic, who did all these miracle signs and wonders. You look at people like John Alexander Dowie, who died thinking that he was Elijah. And so we can start out running our race, doing great things for God, but it's something that can come along that can trip us up in our walk with God. And so what I want to deal with is we got to deal with our heart. The Bible says that some men's sins go before them to the judgment and some men's sins follow after them. So that means the after are those things that you didn't deal with that was on the inside of you. And if you don't deal with those things that are on the inside of you, those things will deal with you. Those very things could be the very thing that kill you, that could destroy you. How many of you know Catherine Kuhlman, a phenomenal woman of God? Benny Hinn caught the mantle that was on her life. But this is what a lot of people don't know. Did you know that Catherine Kuhlman died as a bitter woman? Because she had people close to her that wounded her. And she never dealt with that wound in her spirit. The Bible tells us to guard our heart, for out of it, our heart flows the issues of life. So if you don't guard your heart, the enemy, who's the, the dart thrower, is always trying to get something within us. Jesus said it like this, the evil one cometh, but he has nothing in me. My question to you is, what is of the enemy that is in you. Even though you belong to God, even though you save, you feel with the Holy Ghost, what is it in him that is in you? God told me two weeks ago in Monday night prayer, he said, there's no devil that will be able to stand before you. As long as you don't let anything of his get in you, no devil could ever defeat you. But what, is he, what, what was he communicating to me? Son, make sure you keep your heart covered. See, I think sometimes we get laxed and we forget that dart thrower who's always throwing his fiery darts to try to penetrate our heart. And so if you let him penetrate your heart, things will begin to get in there. How many of you know when you're in a war, you're going to be shot at? But you know what I found out? The shooting you are not expecting is the friendly fire. You're not expecting the people on the team with you to shoot you. you what quarterback you see drop back and then his offensive line turn around and tackle him? Well, unfortunately, in the body of Christ, you can be shot by friendly fire, whether intentionally or unintentionally. But it hurts all the same. But what I found out is people won't deal with it. They let it fester, they let it hang around, and then it becomes cancerous. So let's look at what God said, and we're going to build off what I've just been saying here. Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3. Let's look at verse 8. He said, finally, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, Love as what? Brothers, tenderhearted, be courteous, not, not returning. Evil for evil. <laughs> reviling for reviling. But on the contrary, what? Blessing. 
knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. So he said, when, when people attack you, don't attack them back. This is where we get in trouble. This is where things begin to get a little sticky that we don't handle things God's way so we don't get God's results. And so because we don't get God's results, we can become wolfish in the house of God, and so our issue can become somebody else's issue. And so today, I want to make sure, because I was really done with the series. And so me and Pastor Felicia was talking on the way home. She said, babe, I think you sort of left the people out there. They don't know how to deal with what you just said. I said, I think you're right. And so today, I want to make sure that I not just leave you hanging on the edge of a cliff, but that you know how to walk in total freedom, because this is one area that a clock of everything in your life unforgiveness and bitterness. It'll kill the blessings of God in your life. It'll kill the blessings of God. And this is where a lot of married folks live. The Bible even tells the husband not to be bitter towards his wife. You start being harsh and hard toward her. Because she doing things that you don't like and now all of a sudden you start getting bitter. But when you read the context of this scripture, God was coming at her talking about husband and wife. But he's also talking to us as his children. So notice what AC said, not returning evil for evil, reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, a blessing knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life, how many of you love life? How many of you want to see some good days? I want all my days good. I want all my days good. I don't have blue Mondays. I don't have hump day Wednesdays. Ain't no humps in my days. All my days good. Amen. Because I choose to live in blessings. See, one thing I learned early, blessings had nothing to do with my financial condition and my status. Because I realized that true peace come from knowing the Prince of Peace and walking in his joy and his peace. See, some of you have predicated your joy and your peace based on your financial circumstance. But what I learned, and God taught it to me like this, he said, son, I'm going to give you everything in the whole world. So I went there in my mind, and I said, now I got everything, now what? I still was empty. But when I realized that only Jesus satisfies and fills every void in my life, it brought contentment to me. So I learned that I don't have blue Mondays. Ain't no hump days. That don't mean it ain't going to be challenging some days, but I choose to walk in peace. I choose to be joyful. I choose to, to enjoy the highest and the best that God has for me. Hi, I'm Tony Wade, pastor of Divine Life Church. I hope you've been enjoying this broadcast. I want to give you an opportunity to come and worship with us at one of our three worship services. Every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Wednesday at 7 p.m., and our new Glory Invasion service every Sunday beginning September the 17th at 7 p.m. Come and worship with us with the glory of God is in the house. Your life would not be the same. Come and join us. We'll see you soon. God bless you. I still was empty. But when I realized that only Jesus satisfies and fills every void in my life, it brought contentment to me. So I learned that I don't have blue Mondays. Ain't no hump days. That don't mean it ain't going to be challenging some days, but I choose to walk in peace. I choose to be joyful. I choose to, to enjoy the highest and the best that God has for me, regardless of what's going on around me. Amen. And so you got you to gotta know that. So he said he who would love life and see good days, notice what you got to do. Refrain your... James told us about that ugly tongue. He's a small member, but he boasted many things. He said many wars started because of the tongue. 
He said, Every, everybody and everything can be tamed, but one way you can ta tame it is you need to speak in tongues more. You need to put them to good use. So he said, if you're going to love life and see good days, you got to refrain your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil. Do good. Let him do what? Seek peace and do what? Pursue it. Some people like drama. Some of us, we're not functional until we're in dysfunction. I can't stand dysfunction. Now I would go to my mom's house and fighting and cussing and all nights. I can't do this. I'm going back to grandmama's house. I'm going over the river and through the woods. To grandmama's house I go. My car know the way. <laughs> and so I had to get back with peace. So I made a decision when we got married, I'm not going to do all that drama. Because see, Pastor Lee, she was strong-willed, all that, and didn't want to talk. You ain't finna be talking crazy. Come I'm going to put a halt to that right now. So the first time, you know, she would sell all them old wolf tickets. You know, you some of the women, you need to talk bad, but you can't take nothing. Because you ain't finna chop me down. So here I come back. Now, you are all bad now when I say something bad. Shut up. You bad now. You were big enough to throw it, you ought to be able to take some. Because I can do this all day. I grew up getting cussed out. We wasn't cussing each other, but I grew up handling talk. But she come all broke down. So what I learned, I said, no, I ain't even do this because I ain't going to win. I just won this battle, but I'm losing the war. I was feeling good I won until it was cold at night. <laughs> You're getting lonely. <laughs> hey, I'm like, this ain't going to work. I'm going to have to fix this situation. This must not be the way. So I had to learn that I'm not going I'm not going to say to her what she say to me. She can't handle that. So I had to learn how to fight in a different way. Cuz I want some peace. I ain't going to be walking around my I'm not taking the long way home. So that means I I got to learn how to dwell. Cuz I ain't going to be <sighs> Oh man. You holding people on the parking lot. They trying to go, all right, I'll see you later. Well, wait, wait, let me tell you one more thing. Said, Man, I got to go home. My wife waiting on me. Well, well let, let me, let me, you, you want to stop it? Let, let go to Waffle House. Said, Man, I got a Waffle House at the house. But you don't want to go home. Hoping she sleep or he sleep. But it come back to the tongue. It come back to what we let get in our heart. Because what we, let in the, uh, what we let get in our heart begins to, because the Bible said, out of the abundance of the, the mouth speaks. So what you don't let accumulate in the closet of your heart is now coming out. Amen, you know you got a junkie closet. You just put stuff, you just kept putting it, next thing you know, you like, doesn't happen in here because you're putting stuff in but you never took anything out what's the old saying sticks and stones may break my bones but words would never hurt me that's a lie the Bible said the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue they that love it shall eat the fruit so words always carry a fruit And so we want to produce good fruit in the lives of people. We don't want to leave them with heavy fruit. So he said, let them seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord is over the righteous, is on the righteous. His ears, what? Are open to their prayers. 
But the face of the Lord is against those who do easy. Is it possible that you ain't got your prayers answered because your heart ain't right? Because God ain't looking at you because you ain't in right standing right now, so you're not the righteous to him? He ain't even looking at you. God ignoring you. Because his eyes looking at the righteous. His ears open to their prayers. But he says, face is against those that do evil. So Holy Spirit deal with us. He show us stuff and he said, let it go now. But you don't know what they did to me, God. I don't know. I was down there for 33 years and I don't know. I know what it's like. It's brutal, isn't it? But I overcame the world and you can too. When they spit on me, they talked about me, I said, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. And if I released you of your debt, you better release them of their debt. That's even part of the Lord's prayer. Lord, please forgive me my debits as I forgive those that have trespassed or that have committed debits against me. So debits or debt, I, I release their debt, so the same way I release, you release me. So how would you like God to deal with your sin the way you deal with somebody else's sin? what he says and who is he who will harm you if you become followers of that which is good but even if you suffer for righteousness sake you are blessed do not be afraid of their threats or their trouble so when you deal with stuff the way God intended it takes faith the reason I found out people don't want to let people go is because you think they are getting away with it Oh, I got to get away. You just don't know. Take oh, so I got to hold him. But you know what I found now? The unforgiveness ain't hurting them. It seemed like every time you see them, they done got blessed on a whole nother level. But you still are sitting there getting all upset and all that, and they just going on with their life. So what that tells me, unforgiveness is not about them. It's about you. Now, let me go and help you. Unforgiveness is about releasing people from your life in your heart. But reconciliation, and when you release people, they don't have to do anything to change for you to forgive them. But for a relationship to be reconciled, they must have put forth some change. See, people think if I forgive them, that means I got to just go back and let them keep doing this to me. No, 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 no. Forgiving them means you clearing their debt. I don't hold nothing against you. But to live at peace with you, you live over there, I'm going to live over here. Because I know you still like to smack people. Till you get that smacking out of you, we ain't finna even talk about reconciliation. They don't say, oh, that ain't mean, you know, you know how you get me sometimes. I was just a little flustered, and you, you, you know how I get now. They've they been theming or acting right on the job, so I wouldn't have did that this time. Now, I'm going to let you get you some counseling, and I need to see that you changed. But I'm going to forgive you, but we're going to talk about reconciliation later. Because you ain't producing no fruits of change, no fruit of change. Amen. And so when we talk about forgiving, you release, and there don't have to be any change on behalf of the individual. Amen. So it looked like they're getting away, and that's the part we don't want them to get away. We want them to be held accountable for what they did. Let's jump over to Romans chapter 12. How many of you this is good for you so far? 
And so I want you to finish your race well. I don't want you to become wolfish and you start out in the plan of God and now you outside of the plan of God because there's too many men and women of God that are on the spiritual junk, junk heap of heaven because they never properly dealt with their heart. God had to deal with me as a pastor when I first pastored and first person hurt me and, and God told me, he said, I called you to be hurt. He said, so when you get hurt, bring me your heart, let me heal it, go get hurt again. What kind of pastor you going to be? You ain't going to trust nobody. You ain't going to let nobody close to you. But yet he said, I give you pastors after my heart. How you going to display his love if you, you get the arm bob? You know how men, you go to hug them. I said, brother, it ain't like that, man. And so some of us got arm bars because you're trying to protect yourself. You ain't trusting God. I'm not saying being gullible and listening. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Divine Connection broadcast today. I hope we said something that really touched your life, but I want to talk to those that need Jesus as the Lord and Savior today. Why don't you pray this with me? Say, Father, please forgive me for sinning against you. I am a sinner and I need a Savior. Jesus, come in my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Cleanse me. Wash me from all my sins and write my name in your book of life. Right now, if you prayed that from your heart, you are a child of the Most High God. Welcome to the family. We would love to help you grow in that relationship. Why don't you look at the information on the screen and come and see us so we can help you get rooted and grounded and become a part of this faceless army. To all of our partners and all of our friends, we just want to say stay connected. God bless you. We'll see you next time.